In an era dominated by the endless barrage of superhero and franchise films, the creator emerges as a refreshing and original thought, a rarity in today's Hollywood. The industry, once renowned for its innovation and creativity, now leans heavily on safe bets to ensure financial success and audience entertainment. It's not like 2008 when Iron Man and the Dark Knight came out. These were one of the biggest superhero movies of all time when they first came out, and they left audiences captivated and craving more. Those films are distinct, but their formulas have been copied and pasted to death, leading to a huge decline in quality and interest overall. Over the past year, even Marvel, once an unrivaled giant in the film industry, saw its Avengers franchise and other movies under its umbrella transition from groundbreaking to poorly received. Even DC, their movies were not doing so well. That had been a thing for a while. Boardrooms of producers hastily piecing together plots to appease fans, leading to lackluster cinematic experiences seemingly existing only to set the stage for the next installment. And then there are films like Expendables 4, a blockbuster no one asked for, but it exists because of its star-studded cast and a studio's relentless pursuit of profit. It feels that movie as if a group of porn directors attempted to create a serious Hollywood action movie. Uh, that was just my opinion, but this surge in safe bet filmmaking has left indie films as the last bastion of originality and an industry plagued by predictability. Hollywood is increasingly hesitant to invest in anything outside the realm of surefire successes, even if those surefire successes are bland superhero products we've seen a bunch of times. They look like plastic. However, there is an exception. There is an oasis in a desert of predictability. Avatar 2. Well, no, I'm kidding. That movie's actually pretty good, but I am here to talk about the creator. But really, there is a similarity. Both of those movies are predictable and expected at parts, but they do represent pure fantasy escapism without heavy-handed moral lessons, and that is what people are looking for in Hollywood. The creator emerges as a new Hollywood film, though it falls somewhere in between the extremes of the blockbuster factory. It's more than just okay. It boasts a striking visual style that sets it apart. Director Gareth Edwards, known for his mastery of brutal militaristic aesthetics and a Baroque cyberpunk flair, delivers a feast for the eyes. I, I thought this film's cold, emotionally charged characters, along with meticulous attention to sound effects and visuals, stand in stark contrast with the assembly line approach of Marvel movies. While watching the creator, I was pretty engaged with the seamless blend of visual effects and practical craftsmanship in building its sci-fi world and structures. It is nearly impossible to discern, and this is, I'm not a visual effects artist, but I thought that whether they were using miniatures or CG, I couldn't tell. And that's a testament to the film's exceptional quality in contrast to other big budget productions, like look at Captain Marvel or Ant-Man Quantumania. I mean, dude, those movies are so obviously shot on green screen. It's not even funny. Look at Avatar 2 compared to Aquaman. You can tell that Avatar 2 just has incredible technology where Aquaman, you know, they're just spinning them around on those giant forks. It just looks different. And in the creator, I really, really like how the CG is really good here. It just makes the escapism so much more active. Uh, Gareth Edwards and his scriptwriter Chris White openly drew inspiration from classics like Terminator, E.T., and Paper Moon, and it's very obvious here, especially with E.T., their influences shine through, and the film nails character development and leverages its PG-13 rating effectively, a feat seldom achieved in today's superhero-dominated landscape. I always think that, and this is a serious thing, that PG-13 movies, good PG-13 movies, are hard to come by. This is really good. Like, Dune is another good example because of how they use violence and how they imply a lot without showing, and it's just very good. I think superhero films often prioritize flashy action sequences excuse me, over substance, leaving characters feeling weightless as they pummel their adversaries. They're all, they're all space aliens, too. You never feel like there's any threat. However, with a director like Edwards at the helm, the action takes a more realistic, grounded quality, lending the eerie, I mean, sorry, the entire film a sense of gravity absent in recent superhero productions. And despite its technical prowess and visual allure, the creator does have its flaws. The plot is undeniably clunky with a promising beginning that stumbles as it accelerates only to grind to a halt in the middle with an excessive dose of exposition. In the midst of these pacing issues, there are moments of brilliant action, really exhilarating action sequences, suspense. However, the highlights are marred by convoluted plot elements and an annoying reliance on title cards that disrupt the flow. That's what I thought, but additionally, you know, the film also introduces characters later in the narrative without sufficient earlier establishment, kind of creating an awkward sense of disconnect. Nonetheless, though, the creator shines in comparison to the monotonous superhero fare that saturates the industry today. If it were relegated to the confines of Netflix, its constrained budget would be glaring and its visual quality would suffer. Ultimately, 
supporting the creator is a noble endeavor, for it endeavors to offer a form of escapism rarely seen in contemporary cinema. While it may fall short of perfection, it succeeds in delivering an experience that transcends the mundane, reminding us that there is still room for innovation and originality in the world of Hollywood cinema.